what's up guys we're here welcome back to the channel so today we are going to be doing a beginner's guide over the passive skill tree in path of exile 2. now i am going to be referencing path of exile 1 because that's the only game that we can play right now until early access but i wanted to do a passive skill tree introduction for beginner players because there's a lot of new players that are attracted to this game and unlike myself when i first learned about the passive skill tree it can be completely overwhelming so let's go into path of exile really quickly um, I want to look at this passive skill tree. Now, Path of Exile 2 skill tree has been updated. However, the nodes, notables, and keystones and how they work are very similar, but some of it's going to change, which I'll highlight in this video. So, for beginners, here we go. Now, at first glance, the passive skill tree does seem very overwhelming. There is a lot of nodes here. And a lot of characters or players are not going to know, oh my god, this is too much. When I first saw this as a player, it was it was way too overwhelming at first, coming from like, you know, Last Epoch or even Diablo, um, you know, Ark. Maybe not Ark, but, you know, some of these other ARPG games. And, you know, it seemed crazy at first. But once I started playing, it became much easier. However, I'm going to try to make this guide as helpful as possible. So that way it's much easier for you guys when you're first coming in. So as you can see here, there's a big giant tree. Now, what I want to note is you see my character um, icon or character painting here, which is the ranger. Now, as you can see, the, these notables right here, each one is where a particular class would begin. So each class starts in a different location of the passive skill tree now in path of exile 2 it's a little bit different instead of having your nodes that go for your character each character is going to have their class start in the center of the passive tree and each section as you guys can see here going this way this way this way the starting zone is all based on the attribute so you're going to have a section that goes with dexterity a section down here that goes with strength intelligence all of these different things that are going to give you a start so you can kind of pick and choose how you want to build your character from any angle on the tree so it's not just hey i pick a class and oh my god where do i start where do i go so when you pick a class, you're gonna have a designated starting zone, which is what my keystone here is. All right, now this is a starting zone. This is where you start, okay? You can see that this is where I started and I went along. Now, each section is more related to your character as opposed to other characters, right? Um, as an example, there's a spellcaster up here over here so there's a lot of nodes over here that do with spell casting so mana mana shield spell mastery these kind of things right i'm a ranger class so there's a lot of stuff over here that's bow related or dexterity related however that does not mean that i can't take skills from anywhere on this tree if i wanted to as long as i can connect i can take any skill notable or keystone anywhere on this tree which in turns opens up the box of ideas for how you want to create your character um, even though you can see the section here all the way down to this section is pretty much just for my ranger i mean there is going to be some other bonuses here for other classes uh, with certain nodes however this is the main area that you're going to be in so when you first see this this is a it's a lot it's overwhelming i get it but each section starts you off with a guide to go through. You start off in your own section, and then you can continue to explore. Next, let's look at the different types of nodes. So first and foremost are your basic nodes. These are going to be your nodes that add certain attributes like dexterity. There's going to be attributes that add intelligence, and then there's going to be attributes that add strength, okay? Each one has a different property that you're going to add based on the gear and class strategy or build that you're performing. So these are your basic nodes, okay? The next nodes after that are called um, notables. These are a little bit larger than your basic nodes, but they provide a lot more to your character. For example, with ballistics here, this gives me 20% increased projectile speed, projectile damage, plus 20 to dexterity. I am a ranger. I use a bow. I am dexterity based. So one, it's giving me more, ne more dexterity, which gives me more damage. Two, it's giving me projectile speed and projectile damage. 
So it's the speed in which my arrows fire and it's the damage that those projectiles do. This is on a very base level. These are notables. So these give you a nice big boost. The next keystones or next keystones, the next nodes are called keystones. Okay. So you have these keystones like Supreme Ego. Okay. They're going to be much larger. Okay. So uh, let me see if I actually have one equipped um, just to showcase for the build. I don't actually have one. Yes, I do. So Wind Dancer, this is called a keystone. These are going to either one, add a huge buff to your character or change something about your class build. I'm a bow build, so I want to move really fast. I want to shoot arrows and I want to shoot them as fast as possible. So Wind Dancer here gives me less damage taken if I haven't been hit recently. So I take 20% less damage if I haven't been hit in a while, which is really good. I get 10% more chance to evade attacks if I've been hit, and then I do 20% more attack damage if I have been hit. So it's a trade-off. So I have a huge defensive boost if I'm not hit, but if then if I do get hit, then the pendulum swings the other way, and now I do 20% more damage because I've been hit recently. So it's a trade-off. So I want to avoid damage. However, if there's a chance I get hit, I do more damage, so that way I can clear the way, so that way my character won't get hit again. So these are the three different nodes. You have your regular nodes, your notables, and then you have your keystones. These are all going to be based on how you want to build your character. Next that we got to talk about the tree is the pathways. You can see the pathways here, and this is very simple. It's to get to each notable. So as you can see, that's highlighted in green or yellow. I mean, to get to these notables or these nodes. So in order to go from this intelligence node to this node, I'd have to connect a node. So let me just refund. Um, so I'd have to add one node to connect this box, right? So that just is using your skill points as you level up. Next, you can refund your passive points. In Path of Exile 2, you're gonna be able to do this with gold. So what you would do is you would spend gold. I would remove this node here or this node, right? And then I can connect this node and now this one is connected, boom. Now I have this dexterity node, and now I can connect to here, I can connect to here, I can connect to here, 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 and then this keystone. So for my build, I don't need to go that high, I just need this, and I believe it's the, uh, where is it, or it's this one, 8% increased damage. So that's how you connect these. Now let's move over to Path of Exile 2 because there's some stuff in here that I really want to show you. However, this is the absolute baseline of how the passive skill tree works. Okay, you're going to have a starting zone. You're going to have regular nodes. You're going to have your notables. And then you're going to have your keystones. And all of these are going to be how you build your character you can read and highlight over each one and that way you can see how your 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 like build would do right and see what you're actually going to get um it it, it makes customizing your character very very strong now let's go over to path of exile to passive tree because i want to show some things off that are different from this so there's a lot of stuff in here this is another really good example of how a keystone because this is the big one change how your character is so this if you're a shield and mace guy now giant's blood allows you to use two-handed maces in one hand which changes exactly how your character is going to be which is very very strong the next thing that is really cool about path of exile 2 is the ability to swap between weapons so you're going to be able to swap between weapons based on the skills that you have highlighted so as you can see on weapon set one, we have fire. And then on weapon set two, we're adding in lightning. So this is a little bit more advanced. However, you're going to have passive skills that allow you to set this up per weapon that you're using or per skill. So as an example, you see how it switches and highlights on this staff to use lightning. And then when you switch back, you're using fire. A good example here is we're in mace and shield, and then we switch to a two-hander to deal a bunch of damage to this monster. This is a really unique mechanic, and you will have skill points to do this. However, if you don't want to worry about that in initially, you can take those extra skill points because you're allocating for one weapon set, and you can just spend them in other areas on the tree, which is 
just fine. That'll boost your overall character's power. You can do it either way. It's fantastic. Like I said before, guys, it does take gold to re-roll a skill, change it, or, you know, pick new skills. It's all gold related, which is the new currency. Okay, one more thing I do want to show you guys is not weapon specialization, but so in here on these notables, as opposed to Path of Exile 1, this is a pure dexterity node. I cannot change this. In Path of Exile 2, however, you are going to be able to pick any one of these basic nodes right here, and you can change it at any time. So when you first select the node, you can pick it to be strength, dexterity, or intelligence, or later in this instance, I've already picked intelligence, but wait, I wanna change it. I'm doing something else now. So let's change it to dexterity. To do that, the cost is actually only half. So that way you can change it in here instead of having to take all the gold out to respec it, to basically remove the skill or the node and then buy another one. So it's all gold related. You can change it on the fly, which is fantastic. As opposed to POE one, it makes it very difficult because like strength nodes, dexterity and intelligence nodes are only in specific slots on the passive tree. So that is a really nice addition. Okay. Now with the passive tree there, I know guys, it can be a bit overwhelming here and there's a lot going on, but keep in mind that in the tree, all of these nodes are going to help you in some way based on what your character wants to do or the plan that you have for your character. There's a number of different nodes that you can go over and just see, hey, if I do this, I get more arrows, so I get more shots. If I do this, I have, you know, less arrows, but I'll do more damage, you know, in some ways or another. I know that may be a bad example, but because more arrows essentially gives you more damage or like less firing speed, but the damage on the arrows are higher or it's more attack speed, but the arrows do less damage. That's a better example. Now, I will say this, if you don't want to kind of go in and read over each every single node, um, you know, trying to come up with a particular build, myself as well as, as plenty of other content creators will have build guides. Now, I don't know how uh, in depth a lot of these build guides will be for the beginner and advanced stages of Path of Exile in either one or two, two specifically. So to kind of help you like, hey, I'm going to have this guide that'll take you through act three. And then I have in addition to that, that's going to take you through act six. You know, there may be some stuff that's built along the way I'll have for you guys where it's, you know, act one, two through three, act three to six. And then I'll have the same thing for the end game. And you guys will be able to kind of follow me with that journey with the builds along the way. So I know this can be a lot to read over all this. So if you don't myself and other creators will have build guides, but that is going to be a nice introduction for you guys a beginner's guide to the passive skill tree to kind of help you out i really do hope this does answer a lot of questions because i know when a lot of people see this including myself when i first started playing that you see all this and you're like holy crap am i going to get enough points to you know go through all of this no you will never have enough points so i'm at what level am i i am I'm 88, so I'm only going to get points up to level 100, so I can only get 12 more skill points. And you can see that's only 12 more nodes, so I can't go everywhere. Can't go everywhere. I'm only gonna be able to get so many. It just seems like a lot. So I hope that this video has really helped you guys. Uh, like the video, help me out with the algorithm, guys. Comment down below if you guys have any other questions about the passive tree in particular for Path of Exile 1 and or 2. Please let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer those with the best of my ability, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.